public art has to be accessible. It can't hide in intellectual complexity what its purpose is. It shouldn't have a, an explanation that's necessary next to it. The art of my work is in the interaction. It is not the aesthetic. And that's very important. And that the public enjoy it and it enhances and it also civilizes an area. It peopleizes it. it. It makes it inviting to the human being. From the people on the street to, to those people in the park to uh, the ones in the museum, it's all interaction, it's please touch. My thing is to re-involve people with the arts and take it from there and, and make it fun. In my street work, I'm trying to show the joy of, of being. I want it to be almost overwhelming, this, this feeling of joy and, and celebration. I mean, the whole thing is a, is a wonderful way for people to meet and talk. It's an enticement to socialize. That's what public art is about, I think. And it's to allow that intimacy with an object that represents something to you in the different stages. And, and then they become, they become a friend. All that humanity comes out uh, in, the, in the, the interaction. And that's what I think true public art should accomplish. I like to have discovery in my work. And it's generally done with humor. The more I can fool you, the more successful it is in its moment of art. As you are examining all of the detail and you go up and look at his face, you're taken aback because all of a sudden there's somebody looking back at you and you are caught. And so I'm having fun with you, your emotions then. Uh, you feel defensive for a second and you laugh at yourself. and and then you're able to go on with your voyeuristic trip with a piece of sculpture, which is uh, kind of fun. That's always been one of the things that he's been trying to bring forward in his work is let's get back down to our basic humanness. He has a terrific wit and it's very subtle in some of his pieces and then he can also just be having a ravingly good time creating something and then he shares that laughter with all of us. It's one of the most special parts about him as an artist and as a human being. I felt that when I did the Impressionist work everything that appears in the painting must appear in my sculpture. It's paying homage to the original work of art. I try to copy the brush strokes of the original artist. I don't try to do anything but what's there. What's ever beyond the frame or behind the figure is mine. I, that's where I have my fun. All of a sudden you are in a two-dimensional scene that is three-dimensionalized and you're part of it. It's truly interactive. It's subversively interactive, I would, I would say. <laughs> and it also helps people who have not been introduced to Impressionist work to relate through humor, maybe, and through uh, just shifted perspective. I thought, well, if I know the painting, then enough people are going to know it, because I'm not that well-versed. So anything that moved me probably will move enough others. It allows them to not be afraid of it because somebody's having fun with it. When people have an opportunity to, to be with Seward Johnson and to really talk with him, one of the ways they're surprised is that he is, he's a very well-read, very philosophical, intellectual person. And the sense of fun that's very evident in his work sometimes belies the fact that he's got this other background, he's got this very razor-sharp mind working behind it. The large pieces, what, what do they do? Something happens with scale here that takes the third dimension and turns up the volume. They're not only a presence, your presence is diminished by their presence and really demanding your attention. There's something about scale that's very exciting. It creates all kinds of emotions, whether they be fear or an ability at 
further insight or something like that. I am enhancing and, and paying homage to the original image. This is a two-dimensional image that has become implanted in everybody's subconscious, and I've given it back in three dimensions again. I'm not trying to claim it, except in the third dimension. There are ways of using public art to bring an interest so that the kids can be growing up with an interest in art and a familiarity with art. He is leaving a footprint. His work is going to last. It's going to be very much of our time because of the points of view that they're expressing. He is integrating elements of our society that, that are changing, that are important changes, that are subtle changes, and these, these works will continue to speak for our time. It's social art. It's socially responsible art and socially responsive art. I know that people enjoy it and love it. And uh, though I do like to make people smile, after they think, like really, I like them to smile at what, what I made them think. But I want people to go away happy uh, or thoughtful and changed, definitely affected. But if they can, if I can make them go through two or three different emotions, that's even better. There are sometimes social statements. It could be called just plain life and humor, but I do it as a way to give little prizes of discovery that the thinking didn't stop just with the first impact, that there are other things to discover but I'm having fun doing whatever I'm doing in the meantime.